Okay. And there we go. Okay. So you need to look for this sign. And in this room, I know that there's one outside the back door there. And see where there's the sign over here is it says Mac maximum occupancy 113. It's weird. It's on the back side of that wall. So that isn't a very easy place to see that. So today I decided to put a sign on the front of the podium so that if somebody didn't know, and I'm not perfect, sometimes I forget, you know, or we have other things happening in the meeting. And so this time I decided to um, make a slide that's our first slide here so that at least everybody could um, see that 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 we have that here. And there are 10 of them in Rossmore. And numerous years ago, we participated in Rossmore's health fair, which they have every October usually, and created a document. And I'm going to go get it so you can see it. So this is a list of the hearing loops that are in Rossmore. And I don't think that um, Rossmore actually distributes that list, and I think it's silly. Um, and I would be really open to your feedback about who might you think to ask for that, and we'll see if we can advocate for them to have them. Okay, yes, we need every, oh, with assistive listening systems, Every single person needs to talk into the microphone. And it's not that it's for the PA, it's for the assistive listening system. And thanks, Jim. You can be you can you and more Maureen can be runners. Make sure to turn it on. There's that button there. Simple comment is just whoever does the website, have them put it on the website, Rossmore website. Just the list. Um that is one option. Um, my personal experience is that, is that at a certain age demographic, a lot of people still aren't really in, really in sync with knowing that websites are these multidimensional, unbelievable resources for us that make encyclopedias that we grew up with seem like the Stone Age but they haven't transitioned to that place. So it's always valuable for them to, you know, have something in paper, even though it's not green. But I'd really welcome talking to you about how we get that to happen, that it's on the website, because it is not there. And I think that they're really missing a big opportunity. I actually think it's a huge sales feature for Rossmore to have that over other places. So, yes. An app? Do you need an app for your hearing loss association? Do you have to have that on your phone? An app? Okay. So, I'm going to talk to you a minute because I'm not clear what you're asking me. Okay. So, okay. Wait, no, no, don't don't give the microphone oh, back because I oh, want to talk to you, right? Wait, and then okay. I have a, I have a second question. I have my hearing aids connected to my phone. Does that make any difference? It doesn't. No. Okay, thank you. No, keep the microphone though, okay. because I want to have a conversation okay. with you. Okay. So do you understand the difference between a website and an app? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So a website is different than an app. A website is an online resource of a wide ranges of information. And I'll probably, I'm gonna make it try make a joke actually. Probably everybody except God or including God today has a website. So the HLAA Diablo Valley chapter, we have a website. Rossmore has a website. The American Red oh, wow. Cross has a website. Okay. The IRS has a website. Okay. Your place of worship has a website. Okay. And the way you find those is you open up a search engine 
And if you use an Apple computer, it's probably Safari. If you use a PC, it's one of the Windows versions, Thunderbird, Chrome. And you just put what you're looking for in the search engine. Okay. So if I went to Google and put on put in HLAA, that would come up? Well, if you put HLAA, more than likely you're going to get our national organization. Okay. If you put HLAA DV or HLAA Diablo Valley, oh, oh, you'll okay. find us. All right. Thanks. And I gave you my business card yeah. earlier. On the back of it is our web address. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you for clearing that up. Yeah. Thanks. Now, we didn't clear up what an app is, though. Okay. So originally, all of the software programs that worked on what we had to begin with, which were desktop computers, were called applications. So the first one we became familiar with were was desktop publishing applications that you could type text, like Word and things like that. Well, through time here in the last 40 years, we've expanded to have cell phones, smart cell phones, tablets, other devices. And when Apple embarked on these other devices, like the iPad and the iPhone, they determined that the operating system, which is like the brains, right, of how their desktop computers worked, required too much memory and other things to use with these small devices. So they invented a different operating system. And for simplicity in this conversation, I'm going to say a different memory, right? A different brain function. And when they did that, they created what we basically call today apps. So on your smartphone, when you open it, you also probably have the capability of connecting to the web, but more than likely, you have all kinds of tiles that are pictures of all of these different apps and resources. So see, can you understand the difference in that? Okay, now, there are many apps specifically for people with hearing loss. So one of the ones that um, I would certainly recommend for almost everybody in this room is a captioning app for your telephone. And what that does is it's not that it may not be that you need it all the time. So I know that. Oh, Alan's trying to, I think, get me in the picture or something. Yeah. Thanks, Alan. See, we, it takes a village to do these things, right? So almost everybody in this room now knows that I have two very successful cochlear implants, and I hear better than I ever dreamed of in my wildest imagination. I really didn't remember how much I didn't hear and understand. And most of the time, when my cell phone connects to via Bluetooth with my processors, and I'm making a phone call. Listen, I didn't use a telephone for years because I couldn't understand well enough, and the captions didn't go fast enough. I'm using the phone all the time. Okay, so most of the time, I understand well. But see, people with hearing loss never know when they're going to be able to understand and when they're not. So if you don't prepare ahead of time for the time that you can't, then it's too late to do anything about it. So I make my phone calls all through my app, and we have information up here. Oh, Let's see if it comes back. 
Alan, we lost the, um, let's see. It'll come out when Alan moved the screen, my screen for to show me, it disconnected the projector. So it should come back in a minute. There we go. Okay. So I make all of my phone calls through the captioning app. All of the calls come back. Um, when somebody calls me, they they come up. So I'm doing fine. And then somebody calls me that I don't know, and they have an accent. They don't articulate well. And then I have a problem with numbers. So numbers are really hard for people with hearing loss. So because it's there happening, I don't have to do anything. It's just there for me. And hang on just a minute. So I contacted Eno Caption recently and asked for some of their publicity pieces. Um, at the moment, probably the two most predominant companies that do um, captions for um, smartphones are Eno Caption, who was the first company, and the second company is called Sorensen. Now, Sorensen's app for the phone wasn't that great. So they bought out the company that had uh, the app that people were gravitating toward other than Eno Caption. And that app allowed you to see both sides of the conversation. Well, now Eno Caption has that as well. And I just got these cards, so I'm going to pass them out so everybody has one. Or Maureen, if somebody would like to do this for me. Wait a minute. You have to talk through a microphone. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. I have a caption phone, but the captions are do not always um uh, relate to what the person is saying. There's a lot of mis mis mistakes. So, um, I mean, that's a difficulty for me. Yeah. Okay. So whose caption phone do you have? There are three different major companies. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not okay, sure. So one of them is caption call. And that's the same company that owns that Sorensen. It's a Sorensen product. And see, some of us in this room have been through this from the beginning of when we first got captioned phones. Yeah. And then what you're talking about was really irritating. But today it's much, much better. And I was going to ask you how old your phone is and when was the last time you unplugged it and recycled it? Actually, they actually they sent me a new phone uh, last year uh, because the old phone wasn't working at all. Uh, but but nobody has ever told me to unplug it and plug it in again. Okay, so with major technology that we have, it doesn't matter whether it is this phone that we're talking about. I think your so. television, the Comcast box, all of these things that we have yeah. sometimes get wonky. And the solution to fixing that is called recycling. Or they will download in the background an update. And it doesn't. And so when you unplug it, it recycles. Lots of times that fixes everything. Um, so how often do you do that? Whenever there's anything that's goofy. Oh, okay. Oh. And unfortunately, recently with Comcast, that's been frequently. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. That's right. All right. Thanks. Okay. Now, if you have the caption call telephone. Yeah, I think it is caption call. They have all kinds of additional settings in the menu. And 
I bet you didn't even ever know about the menu. Okay, so when you're, and I thought I had a um, brochure here for that. I think I. No, I bring a brochure for everything, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Does it look like, whoops, does it look like this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I have a brochure and I asked if it looked like this. Yes. Okay, so oh here, okay. So down the side here, one of the options is menu. Yeah. When you touch the menu, you can change not only the volume of the phone, so it defaults, you can also change frequencies. What does that mean? Frequencies. Okay. <laughs> so ignorant about that. <laughs> okay. So everybody, I'm showing a, um, a sample of an audiogram in the room. And I am assuming that almost everybody, I'm looking at who all is here today. Lots of people have seen an audiogram and are familiar with it, but I'm going to continue to speak on it and I'm going to move away. You might not be able to see the whole thing. I just wanted you to know what was happening. So your hearing loss is measured by frequencies. And those are, uh, those are, so these are high frequencies. So this is like birds are here. Okay. And um, this one is where major conversation is. A clicking ta a, a clock ticking. And this is the volume. So within that phone, when you go into the menu, and I think it's called amplification, you have sliders in there. And if you're having a little bit of a problem hearing on that phone in a certain frequency, you can turn just that fr those frequencies up which is different than turning the whole volume up. I would definitely encourage you to play with that. Okay. This phone is also, this phone is also Bluetooth capable. So the way that you paired to your cell phone, you can pair to this phone as well. Okay. Oh, I am so glad I came. Oh I'm glad you came too. Yeah, Cindy. Um, in regards to um, this, this app, I'm my hardest thing is when I'm calling a company and they transfer me to a foreign country where someone has a pretty darn heavy accent. Um, does this app understand them? <laughs> it understands them better than I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, okay, that's a piece. Mm -hmm. Now, Part of coming to HLAA and being with other people with hearing loss is that hopefully we empower each other to do what we need to do that we may not have been familiar with before. When I talk on the telephone to people, one of the first things that I tell them, I'm hard of hearing. I need you to speak a little slower. And if I don't understand something, I'm going to ask you to repeat that. So then they're set up so that, you know, like, like we tend to pause differently than people who don't have any hearing problems. Then they're set up to understand that. I, by my experience, I have people say, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Like they could do something about that, right? Or, oh, thanks for letting me know. Mm -hmm. that generally people are helpful. If I got somebody that I really couldn't understand, the captions really couldn't understand. Today, I would have no problem very nicely saying, gosh, you know, this isn't really your fault, but you have an accent and I'm hard of hearing and I can't understand you. Can you please connect me to someone who's a native speaker of English? Mm. And then they may not have had anybody say that to them, 
But what happens is you're expanding this whole thing of the awareness and everything. And then if they didn't do that, then I write a letter to the company. I email them. I find who, I even find who the executive of that company is, a CEO, and I write him a letter. I mean, they can have a, they could even have a special customer service for the almost 50 million of us with hearing loss in the United States. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thanks. So that whole piece of getting into the place of, I have hearing loss. You know, I need this. Yeah, Jim. Well, I was just going to say that um, for caption phones, my biggest problem are the uh, answering um, systems. You know, you call in and they, they say, okay, for English, press one. For Spanish, press two. I usually get that far. But usually what happens is you get down that menu, uh, the captions are too slow, and you can't hear what the question was. And so uh, by the time you understand what you're supposed to do, they've hung up on you because there was no response. And so what you end up doing is going through three or four times. You keep track of what, where you were the last time, and you know what the answer, you know, what the question was. You answer that question, and then maybe you'll get to the next one or maybe one after that, and then you, it happens again. So you may have to call two or three or four times before you actually navigate through that that um, call tree to get to wh who you want to talk to. So Jim, that's one of the, you brought up a whole nother reason for the captioned phones. You can scroll back in the conversation. So when I'm where you are, I have the same problem. I scroll back in the conversation, read what they said for the, the numbers, read what they said for, you know, press one for this or whatever that is. Something that I didn't mention is certainly on this phone and, and on the other phones, they have a uh, voicemail. So I hope you're using that for your voicemail and the voicemails captioned. The voicemail on your cell phone is captioned if you're using one of the captioning apps. So you can read it. You can read what people said. Cindy. Give me an idea. A call is coming in and I have the app. How will I activate it? Or is it activated automatically once okay. I have it? So originally what happened when they invented these apps, that you get a unique new phone number. Okay. Well, none of us wanted that because we didn't want to give everybody a whole nother new thing. And they listened to us. So today what you're able to do is you're able to have your regular cell phone number that you're still, you've given to everybody. And when a call comes in, your regular cell phone number forwards the number to your captioning app. And then the captioning app shows up and you answer it and you start talking. It's pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. Um, does anybody else have any questions about the, the and we were going to talk about telephones today, right? So California Connect was going to be here and I'm assuming that they're stuck somewhere, right? And we are really lucky in the state of California to have this wonderful program. Every state does not have this. And when I posted our, we have a calendar of meetings on the HLA national website. And so theoretically, all of you could attend a meeting anywhere in the United States via Zoom on a wide range of topics. So when I posted our announcement about this meeting. And frequently during the pandemic, some of our meetings have been half local people, half people all over the United States. And it's really exciting when that happens, right? Your, your reach is so broad. I had people in other parts of the country contact me and say, oh, do we have that in our state? And unfortunately, every state doesn't have that. Um, I think almost all of the states in the West have it. And so for California Connect, it's not just hearing loss, it's 
all kinds of sensory disorders. It's vision. It's if you have something wrong with your throat. I think there are five different hearing. Alan, can you think of what the other two are? Oh, uh, it's a hearing, speech, vision, two more. Okay. And so, oh, memory. So, the and they want everybody in California to be able to communicate in the way that we're accustomed to, which is the telephone. So, if somebody is having memory problems, they have telephones that have great, or dexterity, you have great big buttons on them. And some of the buttons can even have people's pictures on them. So, if you had your daughter, your son, those people, you just touch their picture. You don't even have to, and it dials their number. Um, the phones that they have for the hard of hearing community, at one time, I wasn't using the uh, caption phone, but I was using their amplified phones. And their amplified phones come in different models for different levels of hearing loss. So I usually, pre-pandemic, did at least five um, outreach events in the community. And those were like health fairs and senior things and Lafayette, the senior symposium. And some of the, the pieces of information we have were driven by things that people asked at those events. So I had people frequently say, oh, I tried that phone, it didn't work. Well, the phones are made by the level of your hearing loss. Then the amplification is gauged on the level of your hearing loss. So if you got a phone that was for a mild to moderate hearing loss, and you had a severe to profound hearing loss, of course, it's not going to work. Okay. And this company was called Harris Communications. And... The father retired and his son took over the company and they rebranded and became more modernized. And now it's called Diglo. And this particular brochure pamphlet um, was fabulous from them because see here with the phones, they listed the level of hearing loss that the particular phones were specially for. And in an easy visual place to see that. So this transition took place a little bit before the pandemic. And I was in communication with them about, and we're at the tail end of our um, guides from the parent company, right? I said, would you please make that again. And they said, well, it's on our list. Well, you know, everybody's recovering from the pandemic and all the pro financial problems and everything that, you know, everybody had. And so I don't know when they're going to do that anytime soon. But if you didn't pick one of these up before, it's really a great resource for you. Um, some of the, the um, devices that they have at um, CTAP, uh, California, they rebranded too. See, they used to be called California Telephone Access Program, and then they changed it within the last year to California Connect. Well, I mean, I've called them the other name for, you know, 15 years, so it's hard to remember. Um, okay, so, uh-huh. This is, hopefully today is a conversation, right? Yes. I don't see prices. Is this somehow free through California? No, no. No. So this is, you just go on their website. All the prices are there. Okay. Yeah, I missed something. You talk about a caption phone. Yeah. So I have an iPhone 13. Is there an app to make my phone a caption phone? Yes. And do you also have a landline phone? No, I, I don't use a landline phone. I just use a cell phone. So. Okay. So. Um, caption the uh, clear caption call will also give you a large phone. If you don't have a landline today, they have a special thing that they do. I think there's a card here. Where, oh, yeah. So 
you could still get their phone as obviously it's bigger to read easier to read here so i'm gonna go ahead and give you this do you want one too uh-huh Yeah, they've had that for a while. Oh. Well, but the the uh, apps for the iPhone, which would be most useful for me, right. because that's where I make ninety okay. so, calls. Um, that they do work well. They work as well as these caption phones. Um, I think better. Okay. Okay, and so I have multiples on my phone. And I created a folder that I call hearing loss. And all of my hearing loss things go into that folder. And what I do, oh, first of all, I love technology. So even though this for Alan and I, and today it's working great, right? I think for everybody who's, who's online and in the room, the captions are going, oh, but... I didn't want that toolbar to show, but what can I do here? Let's see. Can I hide it? Ah, there, that's better. Okay. So um, I love technology. I love figuring out how to do things. And because I like that, and because I fiddle with them, I'm a really good person to help people because I've done all of it, right? If you haven't done it, you can't do it. So you can use Eno Caption. You can use the Sorensen Olelo. And those are my two favorites today. And so the difference between them is that uh, Eno Caption, you can have on your cell phone, you can have on a tablet, and you can have on your desktop. And at this time, Sorensen's Olelo is only on your smartphone. And did you get the brochure? Um, oh, I think it's it's on the back in here. Did you pick this? Did somebody give you one? So on this card that we received from them, okay. So you can see, oh, well, everybody in the room can see, but everybody on Zoom, I'm holding it up to my um, camera so that you can see. So it's a setting in the menu to turn on to be able to see both sides of the conversation. So it's not on by default, um, and, and it's your option whether you want to turn it on. I really like it. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it just makes me feel more connected to the other person. Some people don't like that because, see, there's more on their screen. But I like it. So the choice is yours. And, Jim, you have a question. Yeah, I do. Um <clears throat> I was under the impression, and you may or may not be able to straighten me out. Um, I, I believe for those who don't have a landline um, but want to use a captioned phone uh, like that on a landline, that California Connect will provide a VIOP connection. In other words, a connection to, if, you have, if your house has some sort of internet connection, um, but... Uh, voice over, over internet protocol, uh, they provide that for you uh, so that you can plug in your uh, your uh, your captioned phone and have a, have a, essentially a landline. Is yeah. that is that right? So Jim, you know things keep changing. Yeah. My understanding is what you said is not correct, but okay. see. <laughs> If Jerry had been here today, he could have straightened us out. Yeah. So I'm hoping, you know, we'll just have him come back. But caption call will do that. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Um, That's, yeah. Yeah. So caption call, clear captions, and Hamilton CapTel were the three original captioning landline phone companies. Originally, you had to have a telephone line, and they were not internet-based. 
And so the ones that California Connect distributes are not internet based because they didn't want made they didn't want people to have to have an internet then you know that wasn't as accessible to everybody but everybody who can afford to have um the internet today has it and so um the companies caption call hamilton and clear captions all made additional telephones that we can all get for free from them we just have to get certified and that keeps changing too so originally you needed to have your health care provider or your hearing health care provider certify that you had hearing loss today i think on a captions call to you just certify that you have hearing loss and the same is true with um uh you know caption on theirs they just ask you to personally certify so this other option that was really wonderful about our California Connect is that they offer accessory items. And two of the accessory items that are really valuable to us. One of them potentially is they're no longer providing neck loops. At one time they provided neck loops, um, regular analog neck loops. They do provide Bluetooth neck loops. So if you don't have Bluetooth hearing aids and you have a telecoil, you can see here's another thing, the telecoil. You're seeing how many things you need that for. You can get complimentary of the state, a streamer, and their streamer is, oh, maybe I can find it in here. Um, there's, oh, here it is. I think it looks like this. It might even be this one. It's on the back page. This one right here. So you can get that from them. You pair the device to your phone and it streams to your hearing instrument via telecoil. Another device that they provide is a hub. And this hub comes with a bed shaker and a bed shaker is a round disc that vibrates. Now, the one that they um, were distributing was made by um, HomeAware. And I absolutely loved it and love it. And they distribute that because this can alert you to when your telephone is ringing. An additional alert. So... What it does, is some, are we missing one, Jim? Does somebody else need one? Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. So they have a, oh, Alan had one. Can you believe that? How great is that? Thanks. So this was the hub that they were um, distributing. My understanding is they changed companies. Now, this company, from my perspective, was actually better for us because one of the accessory items for this hub was a smoke and carbon monoxide sensor. The one that they have now, I actually love it, but their sensor is only smoke. So then when you're stuck, you have some way to figure out how to alert yourself for, um, and the one that they're distributing now, I understand that they have a few of these because um, one of our members got one in the last couple of weeks. And Jerry, when I talked to him, told me he thought that they had 25 or 50 of them. So if you think you want one, it's time to get it now because the next one won't have the smoke component. I mean, it won't have the carbon monoxide. Yes, ma'am. Well, I was, I I was wondering if you could ever get an animal, a dog, uh, and, uh, uh, say that it is a support animal because you can't hear. Is there any such? Do we have any? 
anybody that's ever done that? Is that possible? Do yeah, they're hearing any... dogs. Right. Just like blind dogs. They're hearing dogs. And do how do you get them designated as hearing dogs? No, no, you have to um, get them through the companies that are training the dog for those things. One of them is Canine Companions, which is in um, Santa Rosa. Okay, and actually, I've been trying to get them to come give a presentation here. Um, can you reserve that um, comment? And I don't want to direct too much attention to it at this yes, time. I can't. Because I'd like to yes, at you. least share this part. But yes, there are hearing dogs. Okay. So what California Connect has now is called, it's on page 16, and it's a signaling system, and it's made by a Swedish company, and the design is super wonderful. I mean, this one's clunky, right? This is um, really slick and modern, and the main unit is the piece that you're seeing that's tall like this. Can you all see that online? Um, and they had tons of accessories. So they have a baby cry. They have a piece that um, is for your doorbell. That They have a mat that you can put on your doorbell outside. And when you stand on the mat, it signals inside rather than having a piece that you have to replace on the wall. Okay, so that's what they're going to have now. And if you weren't so concerned about the carbon monoxide, I mean, Maybe you think that this is wonderful. So they will not. Okay, so that's a second. Okay, so there are the phones, the neck loops, and the alerting device, and you can get one of each. So your question about the hearing dogs. So there are, I think, like at least five different companies that do that. The closest one to us is Canine Companions, and they're in Santa Rosa. And usually in June or something like that, they have a graduation ceremony for dogs who are graduating and being given to the people who were selected for that dog to go to. And we've taken several, you know, the chapter has taken trips to go up there. Um, so you might want to call them up and ask when graduation is, and you might want to go. Yeah, so I'm trying to think of, does anybody in our chapter right now have a hearing dog that you can think of? Yeah. Yeah, they haven't come for a long time. Oh, see, Alan's not using a microphone. He said Forrest. Her, her name is Forrest Rosengren. Forrest and Jim. So anyway, so the dogs are specifically trained. And they're trained so that if this were your dog, you'd have to tell people not to pet your dog. So the dog is trained to be a service dog. It's not the same as a pet dog. Okay, so they calmly sit at your feet. They're trained to be able to listen to the sounds, to alert you, to come get you. Okay. Yeah, and most of them are pretty big dogs. And they're picked for their nature. Like all the dogs that they have aren't accepted into the program. It's fun to go see that. So I have some things that I want to make sure everybody gets one. Oh, did they get distributed, Maureen? Did everybody get one of these? Or do I have them stuck up here? So, oh, here they are. We have two things coming up. One is the walk for hearing. And we want I want everybody to make sure to put it on their calendar. 
It's really a wonderful, fun event. You will be just amazed how many people in the Bay Area have here. So it's this walk we're hearing is the whole Bay Area. And so in Northern California, we have one, two, three. We have four active chapters. So there's our chapter. There's the East Bay chapter. There's a chapter in Marin and there's one on the peninsula. Now, our chapter and the East Bay chapter, lots of us belong to both. So I belong to both. Maureen belongs to both. Jim belongs to both. And we go to meetings and not go to meetings. Um, we go, some of them we participate on Zoom. So all of us come together, plus everybody else. You can have a family team. People create T-shirts for everybody in their family to celebrate their child who has hearing loss or to support their grandmother or whoever. So I really want to encourage you to come. And you can also make a donation to our team. And the donations that you make to our team, um, part of it goes to our national organization. Um, and we all need an advocate in Washington. It might, to some of us, it might seem that we don't, it's not really visible what HLA does for us, but we absolutely need a voice where our government is. So what I did was I made this two-sided. So this side is the walk for hearing and the other side is our HLA convention. So we have a convention every year and since the pandemic, obviously they've been smaller. Before the pandemic, they were thousands of people. To be in a space where there are thousands of people, every single workshop space was accessible with a hearing loop. The keynote address was accessible with a hearing loop and everything is captioned as well as all three, ASL, captions and a hearing loop. So I'd really like, and it's in Phoenix. So it's in our backyard this year. And this is the first year in a long time that I won't be a presenter. Usually I'm a presenter at our national convention. So you have these things to have that to think about and look forward to, and to know that you really are never alone with hearing loss. There are all kinds of us here. And you're just lucky to make connection with us at our chapter meetings. Let's see what else I have here for this, the slides. Oops. Oh, you know that. You don't need that. So these were the questions before Jerry started his presentation that I actually wanted to know, so I'd still like to know them. How many people in here use an amplified telephone? How many people use an amplified, te oh, slow. How many people use an amplified telephone? Okay. How many people use a captioning app on your cell phone? Jim, you don't use a captioning? Oh. And do you find your captioning telephone and the captioning app on your cell phone helpful? Okay. So so, so see, Jerry would have given the presentation in the middle. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, Alan, this is great. You know, I was spent last week reading all these things about how to host better hybrid meetings so that the people in the meeting and the people who are on the Zoom feel connected. You know, because it's really easy for people. I mean, I think it's, it, it's, you can't ignore people in the room, but it's easy to really not bring people in Zoom into our meeting. So I'm really happy that somebody asked a question. Alan's looking for it. 
You can't find it? Oh, if somebody had a question and they really want to ask that question, please look in your menu bar at the bottom of your Zoom window and raise your hand because Alan's looking for you. And we're going to keep an eye out and just interrupt any time. Okay, so we do have some announcements. So our upcoming meeting, and actually in some ways, I, we did part of it today. So we have a lot of new people from Rossmore coming to our meetings. And so it felt like we needed to have a meeting about beyond hearing aids. You know, what's the technology that's available to you to use since the effective range of hearing aids is only six feet. So I'm gonna give that presentation, unless you all think that there's something else that would be more valuable for you and just let me know. In May, I'm really excited. One of our chapter members, Claudia Marseille, has written a book, an autobiographical book, and it's called, But You Look So Normal, Lost and Found in a Hearing World. And her book is going to be released on May 14th. You can pre-order it from Amazon. And so she's going to give us a preview conversation. We're going to have a dialogue about her new book. Then we have the Walk for Hearing on the 19th. On June 1st, we're going to have a brown bag picnic. So before the pandemic, historically for, oh, at least five years, we had a chapter picnic and people brought something and the chapter provided the main entree and all the beverages and things like that. But you know what? I'm five years older and I can't do that stuff anymore. It's getting harder and harder to do that. And with the pandemic, we also thought that people aren't really quite comfortable with all those things. And so we opted to have call it a brown bag picnic and bring your own whatever you want. We're all going to get together. It's going to be in Rossmore. Thank goodness. It's such a lovely location that we're able to go to. Um, Alan, what's that actually called up there where it's it's co covered under all these trees? Shady Glen. It's up by where the bocce ball court is. Okay. So you'll receive more information about that. And then our convention is uh, the end of June in Phoenix. Um, I'd also like to let you know that in addition to these things that are happening, I also am very busy giving presentations in the community. I just finished um, a four session uh, workshop with the Renaissance Society in Sacramento. And Garrity is hosting uh, these workshops on hearing loss. And this is the second in a, se a series of four that we have worked on together. One was last spring, and this one was this year, and they're going to be more. And they were four sessions each. I've given a presentation to the American Red Cross. I've given a presentation to Meals on Wheels. I'm giving a presentation next week to um, the Kiwanis Club. This Saturday, I'm giving a presentation to the St. Louis chapter. Um, the following couple weeks after that, I'm giving a um, presentation to uh, Viramont, which is a plus 55 community in Walnut Creek. And I've been working with them to um, get their assistive listening system in order. And what happens lots of times is places get them and they never really activate them, don't know how to use them. It's like, I liken it to, let's say you decided that you were going to custom build your house, right? And you hired a contractor, they designed it. Uh, excuse me, an architect, they designed it. Then you had to hire a contractor to build it. And the contractor subs out the electrical and plumbing. And they put everything there that's required to be there by code, but nobody ever tells you what that stuff is. So 
Nobody ever tells you that you have a gas shut off valve. So I kind of liken it to like that. So I've been helping them figure out what they have in their system, what they need. We're going to get the appropriate signage, and I'm going to probably end up giving them the series of three workshops. So this place is that whatever work that we do, and each one of us does something every time we tell somebody that we have hearing loss. We're making the invisible more visible to at least one person, that person that you talk to. And the numbers of us, there are 220,000 people in Contra Costa County with hearing loss. Rossmore is a community of 10,000 people. I would venture to bet 8,000 of them have hearing loss because the statistic is by age 65, it's one in three of us. By 75, it's one in two. And at 80, it's supposed to be 90%. So we're everywhere and everybody's hiding. And we're not demanding what we need to be able to function well. And they're not hearing from a lot of us to feel the pressure. You know, when I complain, we have other members who have been in rehab, who've moved to SNFs where they need a little more um, help, and none of the ones I've been to have the accommodations for what we need. I mean, they don't even have whiteboards to communicate. You know, you really have to ask for them. So every time you're doing something like that, you're doing it for you. You may be doing it for somebody you love who's not where you are right now. You're doing it for your grandkids, your kids and grandkids. So if it's hard to do it for yourself, just think about your kids, your grandkids. And little babies, you know, babies are born with hearing loss too. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, we're always looking for committee members. Two of the committees we have, one is the programs committee, and we help set up what programs we have every month, trying to think about what we've had previously, who the people are who are attending. Um, on Zoom, we had some more scientific meetings. And since we've come back in the beginning of the year, we've had really much more basic educational meetings and an advocacy committee, and that's me. So I'm looking for anybody who wants to join me. And as you see today, Jim was my mouth about um, other things in the community. So, and at one time, Jim didn't do that. And so that's a really positive feeling for me. And thanks, Jim. So please let me know if you're interested in that. Or if you're not even interested in maybe doing some of the work with me, you may be really interested in learning more about the law because it covers almost everything. Did anybody ever get communication access when they had to go talk to Social Security in Walnut Creek? They're required to have that for us. The federal government is required to provide us with communication access. Here's another reminder for the Walk for Hearing. And we have a YouTube channel. And our YouTube channel, we have most of our meetings, and we're recording this meeting today. And you can go back and watch them on, on any topic. So we have a really, Rich, we have a really, really good um, recording in our YouTube channel about cochlear implants. So one of the CI audiologists from UCSF gave us a Zoom presentation. And it was really, really, I learned two things from that presentation that I didn't know. So I highly recommend that you go take a look at it. And the reminder to everybody, the law, the civil rights law, that you may be the most familiar with is the Americans with Disabilities Act. And I know that you may have heard of that before, but you might not really realize 
It's a civil rights law. It's the same thing as women getting the right to vote. It's the same thing as discriminating against people because they're African American. It's a civil rights law. And it says that we are to have equal access to people who don't have a disability. That means that we can understand things and there to provide auxiliary aids and services for us so that we can do that. We have our ask brochures here to help you understand that a little more, what kinds of things and places that should be available. And everybody who I think who's on in Zoom has already seen this. Now I have another slide here that depicts the places that you might not think about. And I hit it today. I don't know why I didn't, you know, I thought maybe everybody was tired of seeing it. So your bank, can you understand the bank teller? Your grocery store, your pharmacy, your place of worship if you live in California. So the ADA excluded places of worship, but the state of California in our disability rights laws under the Unruh Act did not uh, exclude anybody. So places of worship are covered under the Unruh Act in California. Your children's graduation from grade school, high school, college. You go to a presentation at your grandchildren's high school, elementary school. They're required by law to have communication access in the auditorium. So if you didn't know that, you might not ask for it. If I go to my grandson's graduation, what do I ask for okay. so that I can hear? Okay, so I'm going to make an assumption that you would know ahead of time when your grandson was graduating. Yeah. Okay. I would contact the school ahead of time. Yeah. Identify myself. I'm hard of hearing. I need hearing assistance to understand at the graduation, what do you have? Okay. They may say nothing. They may act yeah. like, you know, they've got their finger up their nose yeah. and deer in the headlights. And so that's part of the process. And so ideally they would have ASL, American Sign Language. And just for those of you who aren't familiar, familiar with it, Every country's sign language is different. There's American Sign Language, French Sign Language, all of these other ones. So ours is ASL, American Sign Language. Captions on a jumbotron okay. and an, an assistive listening system. Okay. 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 And so I can remember the first time that I was advocating for communication access at a local event that was specifically for seniors. And the first year, and we wanted to participate in a booth. They gave us a booth, information booth for free, right? I didn't want to have to pay. So I was nicer that year. The next year I asked, and they didn't have anything. The next year I asked, and they said, yeah, yeah. I asked again, I said, yeah, yeah. And I said, no, I don't think you're understanding. They came back the third time. And then I said, do you realize you're violating all of our civil rights? This is a civil rights violation. So uh, when Jim's talking about it not being easy and it's not maybe what you want. To, the first time I did that, I mean, it had to be three times. And I kept sitting there and going, can I do this? Can I really do this? And then they had it every year after that. Thank you. Okay. Might not be easy, might take, but every time is better. 
and the place we really need work big time. And I'd be interested to have some ideas from people is John Muir Health. I'm a member of John Muir Health. I have never once received the communication access that I have needed to easily understand. And they even paid me money to give a presentation on hearing loss for their lunch and learn. And still nothing. I am this far away from a lawsuit. And it's because I think that's the only thing that's going to move them. I am a member of Kaiser. And when I go to Kaiser, often, if not always, they have masks on. My doctor has, I love my doctor, but he is foreign and he wears the masks and I cannot understand him. Now, not understanding my doctor is not a good thing. Is there anything I could do about that? You can. I've advocated at Kaiser. I went to Kaiser Oakland's corporate office in 2016. You have the guide from Kaiser. In the guide, it tells you how to get your communicate your health guidebook, your how to get your communication access, and you go to patient services. Now, the things that they maybe want to give you, and you have to see what works for you, because the law was rather open allowing us to specify unless it's a room with a public address system what they can provide but i'm thinking the chances are really good that you're not going to understand that person with a pocket talker and i didn't bring one today and you probably need captions so they can provide captions by providing a laptop computer and they have a captioner like we have here who's remote on that computer and they're captioning every single thing that's being said and you can read it. They're supposed to provide that. And see, Alan's wonderful. This, he, I don't know what I'd do without him. This is a pocket talker. Everybody needs a pocket talker. They don't. We would hear of? Oh, Kaiser has them. Or Kaiser would have them, or I would. No, bring. so every time we bring our own device, we relieve them of their legal responsibility. They're required to provide. I want now, to hear if, my doctor. If it means I should bring one, that means I could hear him? You may be able to. But what, what happens if you don't advocate with uh, patient services and you're in an accident and your mate, your spouse, whatever, isn't with you, you're in intensive care, your mate, your spouse, whoever you're with got killed and they have no accommodations for you and they're not accustomed to providing them. That's what you're giving up. You're giving up moving the system forward. And I've been with our chapter members now. Something happened to one of our chapter members recently, and I'm saying they don't even have a whiteboard. But that woke me up to think my husband, he doesn't know how all the parts of my devices and everything. He doesn't know where I go online with my cochlear implant company. This person broke, had their uh, device broken. Their kids didn't know. She never thought to tell them. And parents don't tell their kids because they don't, they want them, them to think they're not having any problems, right? So every time that we do that, we put ourselves at greater risk for when we might really need it. Need it. Need, I mean, really, really, really need it. So Kaiser has pocket talkers. Um you, you get them from patient services, which is on the top floor. It's in your guide about how to do that. And did you sign in? Sign in and next to your name, put Kaiser. And then I'll send you the link to where that is in Kaiser. Thank you. Okay. The other thing that you could do in a pinch is use a speech to text app. That's on your smartphone. 
And I couldn't have gotten through the pandemic without it. So, oh, where's my phone? So the one that I, if you have an Android telephone, um, there's an excellent one that, that is for Android. It's called Live Transcribe. The fa I have an iPhone. And if you have one of the newer iPhones, they're starting to do speech to text, but their technology and accuracy isn't anywhere near the, the um, apps that have been here for um, quite a while. And my favorite is Ava. And let's see if we, sometimes it doesn't work in here. Let me get it going. And so um, it captions exactly what's, oh, it went to, okay. So it's captioning exactly what I'm saying here. The microphones are on the bottom. They made it so that you can rotate the microphone. When the beginning of the pandemic, I had my, oh, for women, I have a little purse, a phone purse, that's a crossbody. So my cell phone, because my speech-to-text app is on it, and also the app for my cochlear implants is on here. It's really easy for me to get to all the time. I happen to incorporate mine into like a wallet thing. Um, and they make them, though, that are just really thin, only your cell phone, and then on the back of it, you have a place to put a couple credit cards. So you can see how accurate that is. Okay, so in the grocery store, I reach my hand out like this. I would tell the the cashier, I'm hard, I'd make it, you know, oh, I'm hard of hearing. I'm using a speech to text app. And then I'd flip it and show it to them and their mouths would drop because of how cool it is. So I, I tried my speech detect act here. It works 100%, but it also turns off my hearing aids. Is there some way to keep your hearing aids on while you're using the speech detect app? Because most of the time I can hear 80% and I'm using this for the other 20 and it doesn't work that well. No, because they're both using the microphone. But do you want to know what? We've been complaining to Ava about that. And right today, it's captioning me, and I'm still hearing in the room. So what you were talking about used to happen here, but today it didn't happen. And something new that happened was as soon as I opened my app, I had a little thing that flipped up that was like the Bluetooth pairing for my um, cochlear implants, so maybe it's a new feature. Do you have Ava? Yeah, so download Ava and try it. I'm using Listen Live, which just comes with the iPhone. Yeah, so download Ava. Yeah. And Ava works on your smartphone, works on your tablet, works on your desktop. Mm -hmm. And I can make this, let's see if I can do this right. Um, no. no, it makes it so that it just becomes a little tiny icon that floats around on your screen. And anytime I want to use it, I just touch this little button and it starts captioning. So we all need this. All right? Yes, Cindy. The thing you talked about Kaiser having that we should uh -huh. make them get. How would I how would that be used in the office? Just give me a little yeah, hint. Yeah, I'll show you. Okay, so this is the microphone and I like to use this microphone with an extension cord so that her doctor is more than you know, he's doing on the computer and all this other stuff, right? So he could have the microphone with what he's doing. And because I know at the moment you don't have a telecoil, you'd have to use headphones. You plug the headphones into the headphone jack or somebody who had a telecoil you plug a neck loop in here. 
put your hearing instrument in telecoil and then it streams to that and then they have this has tone control on the side and volume control here now the one that they might have probably isn't this one because this is their newest model and the thing that's really great about this one is that it also has a telecoil in it so if you didn't have a telecoil uh, in your hearing instrument you could take this with you and you wouldn't have to worry about if they had enough devices like we loan out yes ma'am rena rita rena rena thank you um, is that thing really good for driving in the car or is there another thing that you suggest Okay. My husband can never hear me in the car. Yeah. So before I got my cochlear implants, I couldn't hear my husband in the car forever until I got Ava. Yeah. Same. And I have, and this was, you know, I have a holder that fits right in the vents. I put my cell phone in there. You can also attach a microphone to your cell phone. There's this little white plug that's an adapter that fits in here. You could He could give you the um, microphone because everything is better the closer it is to the sound. We drove to Southern California to visit my niece. And that was the first time I understood what was going on in the car. I sat there the whole time just reading everything my husband was saying. But the problem is he's often driving. He she can't be looking. Well, at that's a problem. I, that's, that's why I thought maybe that pocket thing, maybe that pocket thing that you showed. So that's an option. The, the complication that happens with that is that it also picks up the road noise. So as my hearing loss progressed, this worked less, and I'm not saying don't try it. You know, when you're in severe or profound hearing loss, you have to try everything. Um, but for me, what happened was I, the road noise came up with the volume, and I had a hard time. But that might not work for you. I mean, you might not have any problem. It might be wonderful. Do you have a telecoil in your hearing aid? Criminal. My, my hearing aids, by the way, they're old, so. Yeah, well, yeah. telecoils have been around for 60 years. It's not new technology. Criminal. Criminal that anybody do that for somebody with spirit of hearing loss. When I call, are they going, and I ask them about the telecoil, are they going to charge me extra for putting that into the... You can't put it in, you can't retrofit your aid. Oh. That's what I'm saying. They did you a huge disservice. So what? You went to them, knowledgeable expert for your hearing health care. Oh. So what can I do? The only thing I can do is insist that they give me new hearing aids, isn't that? I would think of any way I could to convince them about how bad that service oh. is and that you have tons of friends and you experience this now oh. and it's life changing. Thank you. Yeah, Jim. Just that often uh, hearing aids have uh, telecoils, but they're not turned off. Correct. So um, that's she's already means. asked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I understand. But I was just yeah. reading, uh, you need to go to your audiologist and and ask them if if they can turn them on. have to turn them on if i have them and they're not turned on they have to turn them on wait a minute earlier i thought you said you had already talked to them oh oh cindy's saying she said that no so you need to take this card yeah to yeah, your hearing health care provider okay I this have. card 
I have this. And you need to ask them if you have a telecoil in your hearing instrument. Now, most of the people who have ever come to our meetings before didn't know where they had a telecoil, didn't know where they were turned on. Some have gone and had them turned on and some found out that they didn't. So I have been at the audiology convention working the HLAA information booth. We've been out there talking to people about telecoils. What they've got going on about that uh, is beyond my comprehension. Thank you. Okay. So what it is, if you have it built in, you have multiple programs that are available for your hearing instrument. Most hearing instruments today have four slots. So that's for four programs. The first program is some kind of an automatic thing that's adjusting, which you might keep in most of the time. A second program could be um, a special program you had them set up for you to hear in a restaurant or speech in noise. You could, some people during the pandemic had an extra program from their put in to work with masks. So this extra program with masks increased the volume to try and understand better because masks, you can lose 20 decibels. And a telecoil program. Now, until the last four years, you could always have more than one telecoil program in your device. The reason you would have more than one was because you could have what was the most common one, which is called telecoil plus microphone. And the idea behind that is you hear from the assistive listening system. And when Cindy's talking to you, she's sitting near you, you can understand her. This room is quiet. When we tested, when we piloted hearing loops for BART, and because of our advocacy, all of the 755 new BART cars have hearing loops on them. All of the information booths for BART have hearing loops because of us. Okay, so when we piloted and tested the hearing loops of the platform, I happened to have had both at that time in my hearing aids. I had a T-coil only program and a T-coil and mic program. Everybody who had the T-coil and mic program only said it didn't work. The hearing loop didn't work because they heard all of the train background noise. Since I had both, I could test both. The hearing loop by itself was fabulous. Since that time, It's getting to a place where, oh, there you go. There's, there's its floating screen for Ava. Okay, so um, since that time, most of the hearing aids today, or large numbers of them, have an app that acts as a remote control for the hearing instrument. And one of the options in that app is that you can adjust the telecoil. So because I can do that now, I don't need to have more than one telecoil. If I was someplace, there was a lot of background noise. And on my app, what it does is, um, I'll pull it up for you so you can see it. Okay, so this button here, see how, oh, Everybody, here's what the app looks like on there. And then I'm going to go into the room. So this is the telecoil. And here's the surround, the other noise, right? So I can just slide this over. Now I hear most of the surround and just a little bit of the telecoil. Over here, I'm all telecoil. This is just for cochlear? So when you talk to me, 
If you're not in the microphone, for sure I can't understand a thing. Okay, so see, now I can't understand you. Zero. Okay, so now I'm going to move this back. Now talk to me. Yes, it's turned on. How do I know if it's turned on? They might say to me, yes, you have it. It's turned on. How do I know? Okay, so get your card out. We we designed this card just for you. No, this card. It's okay. You can take another one. No, maybe she doesn't have it. Alan, it's okay. There's one right here. So listen, I'm on a national committee. We spent months coming up with all kinds of pilots and things to create these documents for all of you so that they would answer your question. Okay. Now, you don't want to give this one to them. And the reason why, because you've already written on it. No, it's just fine. I'm not, it's not. Okay. So when you have programs in your devices, they have a way that it signals to you that you're changing programs. Usually it's with beeps. Okay. So one beep, you press your, your one beep is one program. You press it again, it's two beeps. That's the second program. You press it again. So that's how you can tell. If you have an app on your phone, you just select which program you want. It's usually much easier to use on your phone if you have an app. We created this card so that the front are the directions to the audiologist, the hearing healthcare provider. So you don't have to use the right language. This is what they need to know. And this side is for you. Hey, I would like to use my telecoils in a hearing loop with a neck loop and or assistive listening device system. Please write clear instructions on how to use it manually. So th this space was left blank so they can write in there because when you go to the doctor, you go to the healthcare provider, it's a lot of stuff. We always forget, right? So you don't have to worry because hopefully they wrote it so that you can understand what they said. 